How are you doing everybody? Jonathan here and in this video I'm going to address a question that I get a lot. That question is, uh, am I too young? Am I too inexperienced? I don't look the part of being a personal trainer. I want to pursue that as a career but I'm not exactly sure if I fit the mold. So I want to address some, some key points that people often bring up and hopefully allay a lot of your concern and equip you to approach a fitness career at a younger age. As a lot of you seem to want to approach this uh, right out of high school or um, in the middle of or right out of college. Now, the first uh, concern that people have is having too little experience. Okay, so when it comes to experience, it doesn't have to just be limited to the gym. You don't have to have been a gym rat for your entire life. Now, I, for instance, started personal training when I was 20 years old. All right, and I just happened to be a gym rat, but a lot of the things that I added to my training, which I think made me more acceptable, was the fact that I was drawing on things from my life experiences. As I played football, I wrestled, I ran track, and a lot of the principles that helped me to get in shape, I was able to work into my workout routine, so they weren't just having people on machines and treadmills and things like that. I drew on my own personal experiences. All right, so um, when it comes to not having lived in the gym your entire life, you don't necessarily need to have had that gym rat experience, but there are other things that you might have done, ballet, dance, um, which translate over well to making your personal training program uh, or philosophies a little bit more well-rounded. All right, now, if you don't have any experience with exercise at all, all right, then you should understand that your first personal training client is going to be yourself. All right, you essentially, you might have some kind of goal because a lot of the questions that I get is, I look too skinny to be a trainer and I think too often you think that uh, the personal trainer has to be like really muscle bound. But if you look at one of the more commercially popular uh, trainers, um, Bob Harper, the guy on The Biggest Loser, he's not a really muscly guy. All right, so you don't necessarily need to be a really you know muscle bound, ripped person to be a personal trainer. Now, do I think it helps? Uh, it does, because the general idea is that your trainer should you know, look like you know, the cover of a magazine. But I think as we start to understand fitness and nutrition, um, we, we understand that you don't necessarily need to be that way in order to be uh, very effective as a trainer, right? and in order to be successful. But if you are concerned with your, your makeup, first ask yourself, am I even comfortable in my own skin? Is there something that I would want to change? And if that's the case, that's a great opportunity for you, for you to use yourself as a test dummy, all right? So if you feel that you're too skinny and you want to put on some muscle, there are a lot of people that want to put on muscle, you should be doing a lot of research on how to do that, and you should gain that experience for yourself. And the mistakes that you make along the way on yourself will help you to better educate your client in the future. If you think that you need to lose some fat, or if you need to get a little bit more lean, your first client should be yourself. You should be doing a lot of research on how you can get to your ideal body or your you know, next phase for your life. Because essentially, when people choose you as a trainer, part of what they think is, I want to look like them. I, I want to look like that trainer. I want to achieve what this trainer has achieved. So if you make yourself your own personal client, you can draw on your own experiences to help um, clients in the future. Now, um, if you don't have any experience with sports, all right, uh, a couple of things that you can do. Number one, you can uh, you, you definitely want to get certified, all right. Choose a certification. You know, I have my best personal training video certification. Uh, I'll put um, a, a jump link somewhere where you can watch some of the certifications that I would recommend, so you can get a basis of knowledge in terms of programming and in terms of the body uh, and how that would work. Um, in addition to that, if you're in school. There are electives that you can take. There, uh, there are probably some physical education electives that you can take. You're going to want to take perhaps a nutrition elective. You're going to want to take an anatomy course. And this will make the certification process a lot easier. Now, if you wanted to just put you know, all your eggs into the basket and major in exercise science, you could. And that will definitely equip you with a lot of information uh, on how to get better as a trainer. But if you know you're pursuing a specific degree and you want to always have personal training in your back pocket, consider those electives to take in college and that will help you to round yourself out a little bit better. Now, let's say you're out of college or you're not going to college, which is fine. You can get your certification, um, which isn't practical. Okay, So it, there, 
in a lot of the certs, you don't go anywhere and you don't show your stuff. You essentially just have all, you prove that you have the knowledge in your head. So the thing that you may want to do is attend like perform better seminars. You can go to performbetter.com. You can go to like a, um, a certification seminar. Like ACE has a, a, a symposium. A symposium. Um, I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly. Regionally, I know the NSCA has a lot of regional uh, conferences, and you can go and you can learn from professionals on how to implement you know, different exercise techniques into your philosophies. And you ask a lot of questions, all right? Like for instance, a Perform Better one day seminar that I went to cost about, I think it was like $110. And I, I learned a fair amount, you know, you, you fill up your notebook, um, you, you actually get onto the floor and they work with you, all right? So a Perform Better seminar may not be a bad idea or a certification seminar may not be a bad idea. Or if you are uh, at a school and you want to get a lot of information on programming, then something like the uh, NPTI, uh, National Personal Training Institute, might not be a bad idea. It's a little bit more pricey. I think it's uh, you know it's a couple thousand dollars for the program, maybe five or six thousand dollars. You'd have to do your own research on that. But that, in addition to giving you the base work, will also give you, I think, four or five hundred hours worth of hands-on practical advice. So when it comes to like you know going into a gym, if you have like no experience and you know you have nothing to draw on from your earlier uh, experiences in life then NPTI may be something that's worth uh, going into especially if you're not in college and you don't want to invest all that money into the college education okay so you're going to want to talk to a lot you're going to want to talk a lot to the NPTI professor uh, get an idea for you know what you can expect and you want to make the most out of your education because from what I understand uh, essentially once you put your money down you're going to get your certificate anyway so you don't want to be the type of person that just does the bare minimum and walks out with, you know, a little bit of knowledge. You want to suck as much as you can out of the teachers. And listen, the teachers wouldn't be doing it if they didn't enjoy it anyway. So be a sponge and you ask a lot of questions as much as possible, okay? So that covers the experience realm. Now, when we talk about looks, not looking the part of a trainer, I kind of touched on this already, that you don't necessarily have to be muscle-bound to be a trainer. Okay? You don't have to be ripped with a six-pack to be a trainer. Um, trainers come in all shapes and sizes. And I, I thought back as I was doing my notes on my football coaches. I really didn't have a coach that was in shape until I got to college, Coach Shiano. All right? um, outside of that, everybody else was like, you know, pretty big belly, um, you know, older. And I understand that it's different when you're older than when you're younger. But you have to understand that... Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to fit a specific mold, all right? I personally have it in my head that I want to be, when it, when it comes to my boot camp, specifically because it is a weight loss boot camp, um, I personally make it my own goal to be the most uh, and best conditioned person in the boot, in the room by far, regardless of who inquires. And I get, you know, a couple of higher level athletes that walk in. Um, so I want to make sure that I can always offer something to anybody that walks in. All right, and it's not about being the absolute strongest or being the fastest. I look at my conditioning in terms of body fat. So I want to have you know, healthy body fat. I don't need to be at 2%, but I want to be able to say that you know, I'm in this very healthy range and this is how you get there. Okay? So that's my personal philosophy on it. Um, do you need to be muscle bound? No. All right? um, and when it comes to age, okay, uh, most of the people that are concerned are concerned with being too young. Okay, and maybe some of you are concerned with being too old, but when it comes to being too young, like I said, I started when I was 20 years old, and I was taking over for a trainer. I was taking over for the client of a trainer who was about 45, and you know, he'd been in the industry for 20 years. So my um, my 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 client met me with a little bit of resistance, thinking, "What can you offer me?" All right, so you have to understand that. A lot of the clients that you train, especially if you're 18, 19, 20, 21, may be old enough to be your parents because they're the ones that can afford personal training. So you have to uh, eliminate the stigma that's attached with age. It's not necessarily the age, it's the immaturity that they're going to assume that you have. Okay, so number one things that you can do, always be on time. Um, don't talk about things that, don't talk about your problems. Like they don't care uh, that... I was talking to a client earlier today, and she was saying in her law firm that other uh, lawyers were saying that they, you know, they got out of work at midnight 
and they, you know, they had to be at work at nine o'clock the next day. And for her, she didn't want to hear, right? Because she got out of work at midnight. She came to my boot camp at five thirty. She prepared lunches for the kids, and then she hopped on the train, and then she got to work. All right. So uh, your problems are not their problems, and the the more that you kind of tend to talk about your own personal issues, the less credibility you have. All right. So your main thing is number one, being on time. Number two focusing on the client, and number three, giving your client their respect for their age, all right? You have to understand that the only thing, for the most part, that they don't have on you in terms of knowledge and experience, maybe a little bit of technology, but it's really revolving around health. Is in terms of everything else, they probably know a lot more than you, all right? And they'll be willing to share that information, um, but you can't assume that just because you're the trainer, you're in control. When I uh, trained, clients that were you know, a lot older than me in my younger age, I looked at it like, how would I train my mother or my father, all right? So I give them the kind of respect that I would give to my mother and my father. It's just that they know to listen to me if I say, you know, you probably don't want to eat this, probably want to eat that, um, then, then, they're, then they're more likely to take you seriously, all right? You can't tell them what to do as if you were their parent just because you're their trainer. You have to give them suggestions from the perspective of a younger person that knows better, that wants to help them. And when you speak to them that way, instead of trying to scold them, you'll, you'll find that you're met with resistance a lot uh, less. I think, especially the younger folks, if you go over to my personal training psychology playlist, there are a bunch of videos that talk about how to deal with clients. And when you, when you implement those techniques, um, then I think you'll be a lot better off. Um, last two notes on age. When it comes to age, forget about how you look, all right, if you have a young face, all right, because you're just lucky. You've got great genetics. When you're 40, you're going to look like you're 30. Think more about how you present yourself, all right? You want to have energy, not the immature energy that, you know, jumps around to, you know, to pop music, but more, I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to train you. I'm excited to help you. And I can't wait to get this um, this workout started. That's something. That's the kind of energy that your client will feed off of. All right. Uh, I definitely recommend the playlist of personal training psychology. You watch the Enter Trainer video, which talks about being a trainer entertainer at the same time. All right. And if all else fails, if you still have concerns about getting into personal training because they are investing a lot of money, you're asking somebody to invest a lot of money to a younger person, regardless of your your uh, maturity level, they still may have the stigma in their head that you're immature. You may just want to start off with group training, okay? So if you're teaching a class, I've seen that the average group trainer, group exercise trainer in a gym is a little bit younger than the personal trainers. But as I always suggest to personal trainers, teaching classes is a great way to get your name out there, to market yourself, and to eliminate a lot of the concern that you're just helping the person because you want to get a session out of them or a package of, ses a package of sessions out of them. So if you start off teaching classes, fitness classes, number one, you get to show your stuff. Number two, add little extra pieces of advice to your clients. Always be on time. Um, dress appropriately. Uh, don't say, I just, you know, man, I'm so hungover from last night, and then be able to wing it, because that's not somebody that you're going to want to invest in. You may come to their class, like, I may come to your class and take it for free, but if I know that you have the, like, the type of lifestyle that, you know, can suggest immaturity, I'm not going to drop three, four, five hundred dollars on you per month for you to train on me, because you're going to flake, all right? So establish yourself as a professional in the classroom, and then you can start to kind of Put the, uh, the seed of, I also do personal training. If you ever want to help, I'll stick around after class and perhaps, you know, I'll, I'll throw you a freebie and we can go from there. So I hope I didn't talk your ear off too much. I hope you found this video helpful. I think a lot of you younger trainers need to let go of the idea that you need to look a certain kind of way. You need to be a certain kind of way. And if you, if you, uh, if you are, you'll find success. If you have any questions or comments, always comment below. Um, if you want to show your appreciation for this video, number one thing that you can do is share this video. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Google+, share it on YouTube, share it wherever you can to help me get the word out to other trainers. Also, you know, anytime you click on any advertisement that either precedes, comes in the middle of, or follows any of my videos, Jonathan gets paid. So however you can show your uh, appreciation, 
That will definitely be appreciated. I'll definitely make sure to put uh, new videos up. Subscribe to this channel. I think I covered everything. So, please remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels don't get rest, don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They'll love you back. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.